You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Raising his eyes toward his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting that Luke brings out the other side of the Beatitudes, but you could say the same thing about Matthew's account of the Beatitudes and the Mount of, of Beatitudes, just here just north of the lake. We have the text, blessed are the poor, but then it's not addressed about the rich, and then Luke says, woe to you who are rich. It's interesting that Luke brings that out, makes it very clear. And then all the other points also. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. And this refers to our human condition. Who can hold their wealth and their riches? And you have people in investment industry, so many investment banks and bankers and brokers and people follow the stock market and all of these things. And they're very smart people, and they might still make mistakes, you know, but they're smart people, and then they're looking for the best dividends. They're looking for the companies that have solid record of productivity. They're rarely going to take a chance in some company that's promising a lot but not delivering, or that has weak leadership, or that has some other major issues. They analyze the situation. And basically, this is what Paul is saying and what the gospel is saying. So it's all together today. And it's also talking to the daughter. Who is the daughter here? Who will be the bride of the king? She's in a family, and she's going into a new family. She's leaving her family, and she's going to not be a daughter anymore. She'll still be a daughter. But she's now going to be the queen, the wife of the king. So she is moving into a whole new realm literally. And this is a very interesting image in the context also of the Beatitudes, and Paul is really expressing the Beatitudes here, and he even speaks about the two sides as well, about the, and he speaks about weeping, woe, and rejoicing, blessed. So we have these alternatives here as well. And basically what's happening is a new company has emerged bigger than AI, bigger than any financial enterprise ever accomplished, and that is the kingdom of God. And all of the other things for which we work so hard and toil so hard and chase after, at the end they're all going to be empty, and the rich will be hungry. And what's going to save a rich person Let's say we just take the billionaires. What's going to save them from illness? What's going to save them from, at the end of their lives, not being able to control anything, becoming a little senile, a little uh, unable to handle their affairs? 
So who can hold themselves from that? And all the kingdoms on the earth crumble. The archaeology is a great witness to that all over the world. And the, what's going to last? And this is the offer. And imagine after the resurrection of Jesus, the electricity in the air. It's much more than AI for business today, than the Bitcoin industry or whatever all the different investment tools are. It's about a kingdom that will never end. The resurrection from the dead. Life everlasting. Investment that will never be threatened. Where moth cannot corrode, rust cannot corrode and moth cannot eat up. Imagine having those kind of clothes, those kind of technologies that can't break down. Imagine those kind of relationships that won't go bad. This is the kingdom of God. And then it's about making decisions that match that. So then I won't invest in a bad company that's going to go bad. I will invest where it's going to go good forever. How much will we have, said Peter? And Jesus said, a hundredfold in this life and life everlasting. And this is a very big, wise decision. And the world doesn't understand the consecrated life many times. The life of choosing the counsel of Jesus to live in poverty. Choosing the advice of Jesus to live in virginity. And the text of St. Paul is very clear. And he's doing that totally out of the conscious, out of the awareness, the consciousness that the kingdom of heaven is here. It's about to come. So be that daughter that marries the king, that spouse of Christ, the Song of Songs, Hosea, the image of God marrying his people, God incarnate in Christ, spouse, the church, the book of Revelation, the wedding feast of the Lamb, we're hastening to a wedding feast. Where do we put our heart? Where do we put our whole life's effort? And how do we live totally free and doing our own thing or looking for obedience? the will of God. So this is a really amazing thing, that we are blessed to choose for eternity. We are blessed to choose for God's kingdom. We are blessed to recognize this. This is amazing grace. And then the amazing grace for parents to teach their children this and their grandchildren. Imagine grandparents' wisdom for their grandchildren the right word to say. They treasure their new teddy bear. But to help them to learn to treasure that God is even bigger. To learn to treasure a new pet dog. But God is much bigger. And their sibling also will live forever in heaven. To learn the eternal kingdom of God. To teach it. To share it. To live the joy of the kingdom. To learn also that the evils of this world are also passing. They're passing so quickly, just like all the good things. So we can't get depressed. And this is the beautiful wisdom of Paul's words, to, to buy as if you were not buying. To rejoice, but with discretion. To weep, but not in torment. To have that trust in God, he's going to carry me through. He accompanies me in my suffering to the point of Calvary. To use the world in a way that serves its purpose, but not to squeeze the last ounce of everything out of it. To live with a freedom, belonging to another world, in this world, but not of this world. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.